Okay, here's the challenge. We have a, a piece here, in this case it happens to be a cube, as we call it, and we may have it out of square. How do we get it back in square? The first thing we have to do is we have to check it to see if it's out. We can confirm that, and there's a couple different ways to do that, and we're going to show you that. Once you determine which way it's out, and let's assume for a moment, and I love to exaggerate because by doing so, it's easier for me to understand it, and I hope it's easier for you to understand it. So my recommendation is anytime you're puzzled with something, always try to exaggerate uh, the situation. It'll help you understand it better. Okay, so let's say that this side is heavy by three thousandths. That is, we've checked it for squareness, and this side is tipped like so. How do we fix that? Well, we know that we've got to we've we've got this side heavy, which means this side is going to be high as well, correct? So how do we fix that? Well, we can put shim stock under there. And there's different kinds of shim stock. I like to use paper because in this case, this is three and a half thousandths, which is, you know, most paper is about three thousandths. But I got my favorite one that I carry with me at all times, and this is one that Glenn knows about. Right, Glenn? <laughs> Zigzag. <laughs> and it has multiple of uses, right? I mean, yes, it's. It does. <laughs> but in this, in this instance, we're going to use it for a shim. So zigzag paper is another great shim, and I, and I never leave home without it. So, And checking that, it's about a thousandths in thickness. So we have one thousandths here, and we have three thousandths here. So if you need two, obviously you just double up. So again, if it's this way, and we need to fix it, then all we need to do is to shim this side up. And if it's three thousandths, we put it on like so. And we put it on our grinder, and we grind one side, flip it over and grind the other side, and then when you double check it, now you're nice and square. So that's, that's my favorite trick for using uh, a paper anyway. And again, if you're on a wet grinder, well, then the paper gets soggy and you got a problem with that, so you, you throw the paper away and start out with a fresh one. Now, there's a third way to do this rather than using zigzag. And by the way, you should always save those, never throw them away. There's other uses for them, right, Glenn? And then uh, another way that I like is to merely grind a shim in there. And what do I mean by that? Well, we can grind, let's say you got to take off 7 tenths. That's not quite 7 tenths, that's 3,000. So we can grind a shim in there. And by that I mean as you come in here, let's say that you want to leave this side high. Then you would come in here and grind seven tenths all the way up to about here, just about to the edge, quarter of an inch away or so. Leave that to its original size. Remove seven tenths from there back. That gives you a shim there. And then you can flip it over and do the other side, flip it back and finish it off. And there you have, grind a shim. Easy to do and it works. So let's go back out in the shop. We're going to show you how we do it. Ready to go? All right. Let's roll. So as we mentioned in the conference room, this is the part we're going to be checking. We want to see if it's out of square, and if so, how much. So this is one method of checking. We're going to show you several different methods. This one's an easy one. We have a magnetic cylinder square, and we're going to gradually bring it up here. We're going to find some form of zero here. And we're going to come out here about the same distance. We don't want to go any more than that, so that's about here. Ah, look, look at that. So we're showing that it's off about three, three and a half thousand, something like that. So how do we know that? Well, we know that because the cylinder square is perpendicular to the part that we're uh, measuring. So that's one way. This is another way if you don't happen to have a cylinder square that's magnetic, but you happen to have a master cylinder square. You can put it up against the part, and we can check it with a light source. Now, if you've got good light in your shop, you're cool. I can drop this paper down there. We know this paper is about a three thousandths. So we know we're off at least three thousandths. 
if you put the paper behind the product and take a look, can you get that in there, Glenn? Yeah. You see the light in there? Yeah. Now, it's important that you are parallel to this surface when you're looking inside. Why? And I'm going to show you why. Take the camera and move it over, the, over this area. Now, obviously, the cylinder square is in the way. You can't see this edge, so that's why it's important that you get your eye lined up exactly parallel to the surface that you're checking. Now, you can also tell if it's within a couple of tenths. How do we know that? Because it's an amazing thing. The light actually turns blue. So we'll show you how that uh, happens to work as well. Uh, if I shim this up now with a piece of paper that we know is about three thousandths, give or take, and now we check it, we're going to check it both ways again. Once with our magnetic cylinder square, remember wipe clean, wipe clean, Make sure the surface plate's clean. I like to tap it just a bit to get it settled. And we're going to come out here. Look at that. It's within a couple of tenths with a piece of uh, a piece of paper. So. Now, let's check it visually. Let's check it with light. But even with natural light, it'll turn blue if it's down to a couple of tenths. Yeah. So that's another way you can tell how close it is. And for that, you can see it's within a couple of tenths. So now what we'll do, we know that it's off three thousandths. And we're going to go ahead and grind this. And we'll put a piece of paper on the back side. That's one way to do it. Another way is to take my, oh boy, what did I do with that? I got it. I never leave home without it. Zigzag. Still make this stuff. I used it when I was a kid. Not for what you think, but for machining. Why cigarette paper? Because it's about a thousandths thick, a little less, maybe nine, eight, nine tenths, but roughly a thousandths. A great shim. So if you need a thousand shim, here it is. And you can put it to use afterwards if you don't screw it up, right? So let's go to work. We'll put it on the surface grinder. We'll shim it up, and let's see if we can not bring this thing back in the square. And there's one other way that I, I meant to mention, too, and that is to grind a shim in there. I can come down here, and I can grind, speed down three thousandths and leave it high on one side. That provides me with a shim, too. Then I flip it over on the other side and do the other side. So that's another way to do it. So there's three ways. Grind the shim in there, grind it all the way over and leave an edge on it. Use the paper, uh, either zigzag or use regular paper, depending on how far off you are. So let's go to work, we'll get this thing ground. What I did was I zeroed it in here so I know where I left off. And I took off probably four or five thousandths on my dressing. I'll tell you here exactly how much. And I don't, I really don't want to touch it there because I don't want to take three thousandths off at one time. So I'm going to come over here to this side that we are making high. There we go. Now you notice we're not cutting so much with the edge. We're cutting a little more with the surface of the wheel. Maybe that's why they call it surface grinding. Feet down again about another half a thousandths. And look at that, that's a half a thousand. It looks like it's a hell of a lot, doesn't it?
All right, a couple more tents. And that should do it. Then we can flip it over and do the other side after we check it and make sure we're good. If we're not good, we can still shim it by using our zigzag. And Glenn knows all about zigzag, don't you, Glenn? You know about zigzag, right, Glenn? I used to roll my own cigarettes when I was a kid. All right, I think we're good here. I like that. That looks pretty good. So we'll turn our chuck off. And we'll give it a check. Always slide. So we're going to check the side that we ground now. We'll check our master again. We're on zero. We're going to check this again. Ooh, baby. Sweet. Right there. All right, Glenn, give me five, man. Jim, give me five. We're right there. All right, so we know that that's square. Now, if it weren't, as I mentioned earlier, we can grind a shim in here. We could grind two or three tenths on here. Say, take, if we're off three tenths, we can grind three tenths off of here, leave this side high three tenths, go back in and regrind it, flip it over and grind it again. And we're done. So now we know that this side is good. So I'm going to work off that side, grind this side, and we're going to call it a day. Half a thousandth or so at a time. Back when I was a kid, I was kind of a hot shot, I thought. I had a lot of toolboxes, and whenever I changed jobs, I went to a new place. I uh, brought in one or two toolboxes because I didn't want it. The guys say, you know, oh, here comes this kid, man. He thinks he's a real hot shot. And then it's an uphill battle. So I always tried to be a little on the modest side and come in and do my thing, get the respect from my coworkers and from management that they knew that I knew what I was talking about. Then I could bring in some more tools. But I never liked borrowing tools. I'd rather have my own, particularly with C-clamps. We used a lot of C-clamps for setups and I was always running around the shop trying to find a friggin' C-clamp. Hey, Joe, you got a C-clamp? Yeah, Fred's got it over there, but hey, Fred, you got a C-clamp? Yeah, how was your golf game, man? Oh, I don't golf. Yeah, well, how did you go to the Tiger game? Oh, yeah, well, I was a Tiger. You know, in the meantime, the job's not getting done, and I'm not looking good, so I decided to buy all good C-clamps, and I mean those good forged ones. I still have them today. They're sprinkled around the shop here somewhere. But anyway, that was why I always like to have my own tools, just to ease the setup, make it faster, and it always made me look better in the long run. So, oh, lunchtime, or coffee break, whatever it is, coffee break, I guess. So for you guys out there, you know, there's two philosophies. You want to have your own tools, or should the shop provide them? Well, you know, the shop, we, we supply a lot of the tools for the guys. In fact, most of the guys, there's a few guys that have a lot of their own tools, but the guys that are out there in the service grinder, we generally provide everything for them. And that's okay, I don't have a problem with that. But I'm just telling you from my own personal experience, I prefer to have my own tools because I, uh, I know what they are and I know whether they're good, bad, or indifferent. And again, it just makes me do my job easier and faster. All right, we're almost done here. All this is gonna do is make this parallel to the other side. So we'll take our pencil, put a few marks on the low side, feed down a couple of tenths, that's about two to three tenths. And it's cleaning up nicely here. Let's see if we make it all the way across. Uh, no. We gotta take a little more off. Hey Glenn, can you get a sh can you get a shot in here of the uh, either with the camera, the still camera, whatever, so we can see the pencil marks?
right there. So if we turn it over and do the other side, it ought to be the same way. Right, Glenn? Sure. We're turning you into a surface grinder hand, man. It's within a couple of tenths. Look at that, within about a tenth. So good to go, man. That's it. So again, two ways to do it. Using shim stock, you can use zigzag paper, which has many uses, as you know, or you can use uh, regular copy paper, which is roughly three thousandths, depending on how much you need to uh, how much you need to check. So that's how we can grind it square uh, and and get it parallel at the same time. Using shim stock is an easy way to do it. And uh, again, you can grind a shim in there. You don't necessarily have to use paper, zigzag, regular. Grind it in. You're off five thousandths. Grind five thousandths off one side. Leave an edge. Great way to do it. So, thanks for watching.